What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. People that have been around here for a while will know that the first Pokemon game I owned was the opening of Gen 4. And that's not due to age. Some of us just didn't have the privilege or means to have video game consoles before then. But because that was my first full Pokemon experience, I am quite partial to the Sinnoh region as a whole. And as such, I cannot wait for the inevitable remakes. Now that being said, I don't mean to imply that it'll be coming soon, because I don't know. My uncle doesn't work for Nintendo or anything, so my guess would be at least not for another year or two. But there will eventually be Sinnoh games coming to the Switch, whether this generation or not. So before a trailer comes out and solidifies expectations one way or the other, I thought I'd share my thoughts on a sort of wish list of things I'd want, or don't want, to see in Diamond and Pearl remakes. First things first, I feel that these games should absolutely not be a Let's Go style game. That's not to say those were terrible, because I did enjoy it. But the reason Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee worked in the first place is because there had already been Kanto remakes before. Jumping the gun and making the first ever Sinnoh remakes in this style would be a mistake. Leave the Let's Go games as their own subcategory of the franchise, and make those in addition to the classic remakes. I can't imagine the only time that we get to revisit Sinnoh as having no wild battles and a dex limited to only Gen 4 Pokémon. More Let's Go style games will be fine in the future, but it shouldn't replace the more standard types of games and can be its own entity while still giving us what is essentially the games that we know and love with updated graphics and modern mechanics. I wouldn't mind a close personal relationship with a partner though, if they wanted to throw in that aspect. But you don't want the games to be a carbon copy, because then you might as well play the old ones again. So the next thing I'd like to see is for them to fix the HM problem. It's fairly recognized that Sinnoh went a bit overboard on the HMs, for most of the game. Every game until then had HMs, but Sinnoh has so many that were regularly required. Most of the time you could get by in other regions without having cut all the time, or ignoring Flash outside of caves. But Sinnoh had so much smashing and defogging and rock climbing that it was almost a necessity to keep the moves around full time. Now obviously there won't be HMs in the traditional sense, they got rid of those in Gen 7, and they haven't looked back since. I mean, the Gala region had a bike and a taxi and didn't even bother with any of the others. But to me, that did sort of narrow down the region a little too much, with a lot of areas unreachable that could have otherwise held secrets. So I'd rather avoid this new streamlined method, and I hope that they don't ignore the concept of extra areas in Sinnoh this time around but they could, at the very least, ease up on the fog. I guess if it throws up misty terrain, that could be different, but I hope that they can strike a better balance between it all this time around. So basically, they don't have to get rid of Mount Coronet or anything, but just make it a little less tedious to get through this time, okay guys? Another alteration that I expect to see in these games is regional forms. Now obviously there can't be Alolan or Galarian forms, that occur naturally in Sinnoh because, by definition, those are specific to those regions. However, as others have pointed out, there are numerous opportunities for brand new forms in Diamond and Pearl remakes just by virtue of there being four generations since then. There's literally just about 400 more Pokémon that couldn't be found in Sinnoh last time we were there, so any one of those could have a different form in the updated version of the region. There could easily be Sinnoh forms for Unova Pokémon, since we've never seen them in the region before. Granted, those forms are generally to bolster older, forgotten Pokémon, but providing them for relatively new Pokémon could be useful as well. Even brand new Pokémon that people are still getting used to could be altered when we get into Sinnoh remakes. And plus, with a sort of specialty in Sinnoh being evolutions to older Pokémon, they could continue this by creating new stages to regional forms, like we saw in Sword and Shield. I do actually expect this facet to be in the games, since it's about the only gimmick that Pokémon didn't drop like a hot hippopotas. So go ahead and drop your plans for a Talon Freeze or whatever, 
because if they do it right, there will be plenty to go around. Now, assuming that the trend holds from previous remakes, there will be inclusions from the past third game as well. So we'll likely get some sort of send-up or platinum version. Personally, I would want this to be something similar to the Delta episode in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Or maybe even better for the detractors out there. But basically, I am expecting some sort of post-game story revolving around Giratina. Now, back in Pokémon Platinum, the renegade Pokémon was the main focus, including its cool, sleek origin form. But one of the main differences from the other games was the ability to enter the Distortion World. We were actually able to traverse this alternate dimension over a decade ago, so it would be more than a little disappointing if we couldn't do the same today. Plus, can you imagine what they could make it look like on the Switch? It could be something truly mind-blowing. But charging into the Distortion World, in HD, with fully rendered Cyrus and Cynthia on either side would be a thrill. And I think they know that. So hopefully we can get a story like that in the post-game after we've handled our mascots problems. And they could even use this dimension hopping as an excuse to include all the extra legendaries that they like to do so much. But speaking of, I hope that they can pull at least one other thing from the Delta episode, and that's bringing in previously unobtainable mythicals. See, Deoxys had only ever been catchable through outside means. You could still sometimes go and physically catch mythicals, but only if you had taken the proper real-world steps first by getting some sort of event item. That all changed in the remakes when we just flew off into space and caught it of our own volition. And I want something like this for Sinnoh. After all, it could be argued that Sinnoh was the first time exclusive mythicals got out of hand, jumping from 2 up to 5. So if Hoenn could alleviate some of that, surely these games on the Switch could. Imagine actually being able to go back to Spear Pillar and using that Azure Flute, finally getting to see Arceus' part unfold as it was meant to. Or maybe after completing the decks, you simply talk to Oak in his house, and he'll take you straight to the Flower Paradise to get Shaman. Or you could simply hop on a boat to New Moon Island, the only barrier to entry being that you've already caught Cresselia, to go and face its nightmarish counterpart. Or better yet, in the post-game battle area, you could come across some rangers that hand you a special mana fee egg. Any one of those would be fantastic as a reward for loyal longtime fans. I'm not saying that we need all of them in one, that's probably a little too much but they could certainly provide us with at least one opportunity to make our experience a little more memorable and legendary. They could maybe program in such events if you do download the right Pokémon, but I'd say there should be at least one of these scenarios right on the game card, able to be triggered from the beginning without the need for internet. If for nothing else, then to help solidify these games as different enough from their predecessors. Now, I realize there have been supposed leaks about these games already, but I hate leaks. And I don't even believe them. They mentioned new Mega Evolutions, but that mechanic has been tossed out. If you're gonna create fake leaks, at least switch it over to new Gigantamax forms, come on guys. Which I'm also kind of torn on. I mean, new forms would be cool, but there's no way that Dynamaxing will be sticking around either, so I don't know. What I do hope for sure is that these games can learn from mistakes that Sword and Shield have made. I already mentioned how they could beef up the post-game, but the main story is what I'm worried about. You see, despite having some open-world elements, Sword and Shield felt like some of the most linear Pokémon games they've ever made. After the opening ceremony, I fully expected to be able to challenge whichever gym I wanted, at least out of the first three, but no. So I hope that this can be amended in the Sinnoh region. It was sort of like that before, but being able to choose your own path would be a nice change of pace. And actually more of a callback to the Game Boy era games. It'd be really cool to encounter the Team Galactic admins in whichever order you wanted, before the main fighting kicks off, but that seems unlikely. Say once you got to Heart Home City, you could either challenge the gym there, or go on to Veilstone like in the original games or even down through the dreaded swamp area to Pastoria. It'd even be cool to walk freely over to Sunny Shore, 
but that's probably even less plausible than the Team Galactic shakeups, since they would have to scale the teams of the gym leaders to wherever you were in your progression. That sounds like a lot of work that they would never do. Although I guess you could just get whipped over and over again if they had static teams. Choosing multiple paths would be great. The story wouldn't be irrevocably altered, just rearranged a little. Seeing the gym leaders in whatever order you wanted, probably after the first two. But none of that will probably happen, so at the very least, can we please rematch the gym leaders after we've beaten the game? It'd just be nice to see them more than once, you know? But those are just some of the things that I would like to see done specifically for Diamond and Pearl remakes. Uh, no rush, though. Whenever you get around to it. What would you most like to see in remakes of Sinnoh? Let me know down in the comments. Also, be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And we'll see you around next time!